Et je me pense à Ravon. Je suis une autrice euh, de Anatomie d'un scandale, Autopsie d'un drame et Fragile réputation. I think it's Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I remember reading it when I was about 13 years old and being really struck by the sense of place and also by the mystery of what happened to, to Rebecca, to the first Mrs. De Winter, and also um, struck by the terrifying Mrs. Danvers. So when I was a little girl, I used to write short stories um, and not just, well, short stories by our standards now. And when I was 10, I entered a competition to be um, the Devon is the region in the UK where I come from, to be the Devon Young Writer of the Year. And I won. And I wrote a story which is very on brand for my, um, for Rebecca, but also for the farm at the edge of the world, um, because it was set in the very far west of Cornwall. And it was about the mystery of some Neolithic standing stones and the sort of witchcraft that was happening there. And I actually won £75 in cash, which I spent on a, which was a lot of money in 1983, which I spent on a typewriter, no word processors or computers then, and a Roberts radio. And I won £50 in book vouchers. And at that time you could get a book for a pound. I write on a keyboard because I was a journalist for 15 years and I suppose I got used to typing out stories like that. But if I'm feeling really stuck, then I will resort to a pen and paper. So for instance, yesterday on the Eurostar, I wrote with a pen and paper because I've been feeling a bit itchy about my current work in progress and I've been wondering where it's going to go. And I think that if you're someone like me who, you know, did my essays at school and my degree all by handwritten, there's something quite freeing about using pen and paper feels like there's one level less of mediation somehow. It feels a bit more natural. My favourite psychological thriller is Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn because I think it was such a game changer. So I think it came out in 2012. Um, I reread it this summer, earlier this summer, um, because I was being asked precisely that question. And the twist in the middle still took me by surprise, even though I knew it was coming. And what was really interesting was then to read on thinking how how that twist had been sewn in the previous first half. I just think it's very, very clever. So um, all my novels come from various different, maybe two or three little germs of inspiration, but they tend to often come from news stories. Uh, I was a news reporter for 50, well, 13 years, and then, and then a journalist. I'm sort of avidly listen to the news every day and you know read the papers. Um, so Anatomy of a Scandal came from a column about a footballer appealing against his conviction for rape. And it was my um, reaction to some of the opinions cited in that column that kind of really inspired me to think of the story. And with Fragile Reputation, I think I've pronounced that right, or Reputation as it is in the UK, it was an interview with a female MP uh, in which she talked about, who, who's quite outspoken on, um, on issues like domestic violence. And she talked about having nine locks on her front door and a panic alarm by the side of her bed. And it was just a real light bulb moment. You know, I just thought, gosh, what would it be like to be somebody living under that level of stress? Um, you know, how would I react if I was that sort of woman? And I'd already written, um, it's called Little Disasters in the UK, or Autopsy d'un drame is here, which is about a woman who effectively kind of gaslights herself, you know, her mind plays tricks on herself. And I know that I'm quite guilty of catastrophizing. You know, I kind of worry too much about a situation. Um, so I thought that if I was an MP, and I was imagining, I was experiencing so much threat online that I had nine locks on my front door and a panic alarm by my bed. I thought that my thinking wouldn't always be that rational. And I wondered how an MP might um, react if she had a lot of jeopardy thrown at her. So Fragile Reputation uh, is about a, um, a female MP, uh, she's only been an MP for four years, and she is accused of murder when a journalist with whom she's become entangled is found dead in her home. But it's really about the difficulty of navigating your way in public life as a woman with issues like um, internet trolling, stalking and revenge porn. And there's also a parallel story concerning um, my MP Emma Webster's daughter, who's a 14 year old, and she's experiencing bullying by frenemies on social media. And the two strands kind of become interweaved with difficult results. 
Anatomy of a Scandal um, is about a charismatic government minister who's accused of raping a parliamentary researcher with whom he's had an affair in a lift in the House of Commons. And it's really about power, um, privilege and consent. And the themes of entitlement um, are really woven through because it's a backstory in Oxford um, where there are there's behaviour of, of a club called the Libertines, which is loosely based on, on the Bullingdon Club, which is a real life um, drinking society that, that existed at Oxford. James Whitehouse is prosecuted by a barrister called Kate Woodcroft and she might just have her own reasons for, for prosecuting this case. That's a really excellent question. Um, I am inspired by reality. I depict it and I want to provoke questions about it. My novels are very much based in the real world. So they're not escapist in the way that romances might be or, or science fiction or fantasy. But at the same time, I think the process of reading is something in which I want people to be immersed in the experience and I want them to be able to forget about their everyday life as they're caught up with the story and they're invested in, in their feelings for the characters. So in that way, I think that all forms of reading fiction are, are a form of escapism. So I hope I manage to do the two. I write books that are grounded in reality, but hopefully um, they allow people to escape their reality for a while. Thank you.